When we first learn basic statistics in school, we're usually given a short list of numbers as our data set. With just a few values, it's relatively easy to quickly calculate the mean, median, mode, and range. But for larger data sets, a list of numbers is not ideal. They're hard to work with because it's so easy to lose a number, which would mean miscalculating things like the mean and median. Instead, we're better off having this data set in a frequency chart. We have a column for the values in our set and a second column that tells us the frequency of each value in the set. Since our list is sequential, it's easy to fill in the chart. The first value in our list is 11, and we can count that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them in the list. So in our frequency chart, the value of 11 has a frequency of 5. For the number 12, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them, so the value of 12 has a frequency of 7. And we can also count that the value 13 has a frequency of 8. Now, there aren't any 14s in our data set, but we can still include 14 in our frequency chart so that we don't have any weird gaps in the values. We would just say that 14 has a frequency of 0. Finally, we can see that the number 15 has a frequency of 3. The SAT will almost never give you a list of numbers and expect you to create the frequency chart. However, they will absolutely give you a frequency chart and expect you to understand the list of numbers that it represents. We can also use a dot plot as a frequency chart that is a bit more visual. We start with a number line along the bottom, and notice that we are once again including values that are not on our list. For a dot plot, we would never want to skip over a value like 14 because number lines need to include all of the values over our range. We are going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dots at 11 to represent the 5 times that 11 appears in our data set. The number 12 is a frequency of 7, so we'll have 7 dots above 12 on the number line. As we draw the 8 dots for the value 13, we can see why dot plots are a bit cumbersome. We sometimes have to draw a lot of dots, and anything more than 5 dots is hard to count quickly. We would not draw any dots at 14 because there aren't any 14s in our data set, but we can finish up with 3 dots for the 3 15s. A histogram is very similar to a dot plot but we now have an x-axis with the values and a y-axis that shows the frequencies. Since the number 11 appears five times in the data set, we draw a rectangle at 11 that goes up to five on the y-axis. We can also draw rectangles to show that the number 12 appears seven times, the number 13 appears eight times, and the number 15 appears three times. Now let's take a look at how we would calculate the mean, median, mode, and range for each of these types of frequency charts. We'll start with the range because it's probably the easiest to calculate. Remember that the range is defined as the maximum value in a set minus the minimum value in a set. For this data set, the range is 4. Starting with the frequency chart, we can see that the maximum value is 15, and the minimum value is 11. 15 minus 11 is 4, so the range is 4. To be clear, I don't actually care what the frequency is for the maximum or minimum. It doesn't matter that there are three 15s or five 11s. As long as there's one or more, I can use that value to calculate the range. On the dot plot, I can see that the smallest value with any dots is 11, so that's the minimum, and the largest value with dots is 15. Again, 15 minus 11 is four. The histogram works the same way. The minimum is 11, and the maximum is 15. The mode is also easy to remember on frequency charts. Remember that the mode is the most common number in the data set, so we're looking for the highest frequency. On the frequency chart, the highest frequency is 8, so the mode is 13. On the dot plot and histogram, we're just looking for the tallest column. On the dot plot, it's obvious that 13 has the most dots, and on the histogram, it's obvious that 13 has the tallest rectangle. To be clear, the mode for this data set is 13, not 8. Whenever we calculate the mean, median, or mode, our answer should be a value, not a frequency. For some reason, lots of students get confused and say that the mode is 8, but remember that our original data set did not actually contain any 8s. How could the most common value be 8 if the list didn't contain any 8s at all? Just try and remember that the value is what we're actually solving for in each case. Finding the mean is more complicated. We know that the mean is just the average, which is found by taking the sum of the numbers and dividing by the total number of numbers in our data set. When we have a frequency chart, we are first going to multiply the value and frequency for each row. Remember that the first row is telling us that the number 11 appeared in our data set five times. If we were calculating the average from the full list, we'd start finding the sum of the numbers by adding 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11, which is 55. The multiplication is just a shortcut for all of that addition. 
But then we need to find the overall sum by adding each of these new values. We get that the sum of all the numbers in the data set is 288. Next, we need to know how many data points are in our data set, which we can find by adding the frequencies. This data set has 23 values. Now we can divide 288 by 23 to get a mean of approximately 12.5. I rounded my answer to the nearest tenth out of convenience, but make sure that you follow any rounding instructions in the SAT question. Let's skip over to the histogram because it's a bit easier to find the mean here than on the dot plot. We can start finding the sum by multiplying the x value times the y frequency for each column. Then we add the result for each column to get the overall sum of 288. To find the total frequency, find the y value for each rectangle and add them together to once again get 23. We do pretty much the same thing on the dot plot, but it's a bit more annoying because we actually have to count the dots for each column. We'd still multiply the number of dots times the values to get the individual sums before we get the overall sum of 288. To be clear, I would be doing all of this work on my scratch paper for an SAT question. It's definitely possible to put all of this information into a calculator at once, but I think that's too risky. Desmos can't calculate the mean from a frequency chart unless you enter some complicated formulas, and I don't trust myself to keep all of this data straight if I entered into a single calculator formula. It's much safer to find the sum for each row or column and write those numbers down. That way, if you make an arithmetic mistake, it's not getting lost in a big messy formula. Finding the median can be tricky. A lot of my students make mistakes or fall for traps. Let's start with the dot plot so that we can understand how the process works in a very visual way. Since the median is the middle value, we can work our way to the middle by crossing off data points from each end of the list. We start by crossing off an 11 on the left, and then balancing it out with a 15 on the right. Then again, cross out an 11 and a 15, and then again. Once the 15s are gone, we move to the next column inward. We cross out an 11 and a 13. Let's pick up the pace, continuing to cross out one number on the left and one on the right. Eventually, we are left with one or two middle values, and that tells us the median is 12. Eliminating one or two data points at a time can be tedious, so let's use the histogram to see how we can shorten this process. I always look at the values on the ends and pick the one with the smallest frequency. I'm going to eliminate all three 15s at once. Then I'll balance that out by eliminating three of the 11s all at once. From here, I keep working inwards towards the middle. I get rid of the remaining two 11s, and I balance it out by crossing off two of the 13s. You can cross off from the top or bottom, whichever you find easier. Now I see that there are more 12s remaining than 13s, so I cross off all six of the 13s and six of the 12s. I'm left with just one last 12, which is the median. I use a very similar process on the frequency chart itself. I cross off all of the 15s and then remove three of the 11s for balance, leaving me with two 11s. Then crossing off the two remaining 11s gets rid of two of the 13s, leaving me with six. I can get rid of all the 13s and six of the 12s, leaving me with one leftover 12, which is the median. There is another method for finding the median that I'll show you later, but this is the one I prefer. To be clear, if an SAT question gave me a histogram or dot plot, I would not redraw them on my scratch paper. Instead, I would convert the dot plot or histogram into an ordinary frequency chart and then work with the information from there to find the median. Let's take a look at a new data set and a more advanced kind of histogram that lists values in intervals. Notice that the rectangles don't correspond to a particular value, but seem to spread across a range of values. For histograms with intervals, we don't know the exact data points that make up the set. And because of that, we cannot calculate the range, mode, mean, or median exactly. An SAT question should explain how the intervals work, and it will almost certainly sound something like this. For the tallest rectangle, we could say that it includes values that are greater than or equal to 20, but less than 30. In other words, we don't know what's going on with the eight values represented by this rectangle, but they could include 20, 21, 22, and so on, all the way up to 28 and 29, but not 30. The value 30 would be in the next interval to the right, and this is assuming that the commute times are integers only. The SAT would use a histogram like this to force us to think in more complex ways about the set. For example, they could ask us for some possible values of the range. In this case, the maximum possible range would be 69, but the minimum possible range would be only 51. That's a huge difference. If we look at the box all the way to the right, we can come up with possible values for that single data point. It could be as high as 69, or as low as 60, 
because this interval represents values greater than or equal to 60, but less than 70. On the left side, there are more data points in that first interval, but we can still make assumptions about those values. If we wanted the range to be as wide as possible, we would want the first interval to include at least one zero. Now we have the maximum possible range, which is 69 minus zero, which is 69. But we can also get the smallest possible range by making all of the data points in this interval equal to 9, which would be the highest possible value for that interval. In that case, our smallest maximum of 60 minus our largest minimum of 9 gives the smallest possible range of 51. If this is confusing, don't worry about it. Very few SAT questions will involve this type of histogram. Nevertheless, let's use it one more time to find the median using an alternative method. When the histogram has intervals, the best we can do is find the interval that contains the median. The exact median cannot be known if we don't have the data points, but the method we're about to use can work on regular histograms as well. We start by finding the total number of values in our data set, which is the sum of the frequencies. We get 27, and then we need to add an extra one. Then we divide 28 by two to get 14. The last step is to count our data points until we get to the 14th value. The easiest way to do this is to think about cumulative frequencies. The first column contains the first six data points in our list. Adding in the second column's five data points, we now have a cumulative 11 data points. Remember, we wanna to get to the 14th data point. If we add the third column, we get 19 total data points, meaning that somewhere in the third column, we passed the 14th data point. So our median is somewhere between 20 and 29. We can also count from the right if we want. The last column has just one data value. Then the next column gets us to three data points. Then we get to eight, and the tallest column brings us to 16 total data points, meaning we once again passed the 14th value somewhere in that interval. Again, we don't know the exact median, but we know that the median could be any number from 20 to 29. And remember, if this method of finding the median is confusing, you can use the elimination method we used earlier. We covered a lot in this lesson, but we can end on a very simple reminder. No matter how we represent the frequencies in a chart or graph, it's important that we don't confuse the frequencies with the values themselves. Frequency charts are the basis of a lot of SAT traps, so we have to be extra careful when they show up in SAT questions. I hope that you now know what frequency charts mean and how they represent a large data set so that you can completely avoid those SAT traps. Thanks for watching.